and the Pizza Express connection came from this video from a Hampstead cover-up in England that this guy believed the children tweeted at me and this has been linked up on the Steam It blog and you should check out the Hampstead cover-up because I think it connects to all this somehow. And we know that there's a ton of tunnels in and around DC because pictures like the Washington, you know, White House tunnel system and pictures like this one on the screen, which is a picture of one of the old abandoned tunnels under Washington, D.C. Another restaurant I took a look at that would have to be involved in all this was Little Red Fox, which is right there, right next to, you know, Comet Ping Pong Pizza. And they would likely have to be involved in this whole scheme or else they'd probably be blowing the whistle. So here you can see it's owned by jenna and matt carr and they're from you know california and they seem to be sort of these you know leftist you know liberal type people just like everyone else here involved with this and basically you know there's nothing i can get out of this but they do seem to have this strange fascination with foxes and foxes are often used in you know, fur porn and weird crap like that that you'll find on 4chan. And if you go to 4chan, you'll see what I mean. And they seem to have a daughter, which means they should be investigated and probably, you know, be separated from that girl so she's not being abused. And, you know, this image right here to me on their Instagram is pretty damning. And I would suggest people go scour through the little red fox Instagram, which is still publicly and open for investigation. And here you can see at the end of it, it's hashtag cheese, which is one of these big code words that everyone was talking about. So this looks like another piece of evidence. I mean, why would they be that psyched up about cheese? Come on now. And this is a picture of their own kid. This is absolutely disgusting. Another thing that connects them to this, just to double, you know, confirm the Little Red Fox connection, was one of their big promotions of the year was a nasty woman cookie which has the heart inside of a heart symbol, which is therefore on the FBI known pedophilia symbols list. Just to give you an idea what the street view looks like, this is a view of Terrasol, which is across the street from Comet Ping Pong. And here you have politics and prose, which is also connected to all this. And notice the purple color, which is symbolic of the occult. And these people are listed right behind Elephantus at 50. On the GQ magazine list of most important people in DC, which I thought was interesting, they're literally right behind Elephantus. As we already discussed, Beyond Borders is right across the street and also displayed child pedophilia symbolism, and they need to be highly investigated because they could be involved in international human trafficking. Another person that needs to be investigated and is connected to all this is this Evie's Crib lady who seems to be, you know, putting ads up on the internet, you know, for spending time with her children in the pool. And then there's this other comment, which is absolutely disgusting, where, you know, Evie's crib posts, Evelyn is growing up. Soon she will be the queen of the entire USA. Right now, for a limited time only, you can spend some time with her online, raw and uncut. Uh, yeah, that's absolutely disgusting. And why the hell are they posting this? Someone please go arrest this lady. Another individual that needs to be highly investigated is this Kevin Reynolds individual. You can see with Bill Clinton right there. And you can see that the child in this image has some sort of, you know, what looks like some sort of satanic, you know, abuse happening to him. Because that looks like a, you know, symbol imprinted in, you know, red bruises on that child's side. And this guy needs to be, you know, highly investigated. Just two updates that were posted on DC Leaks and on Reddit. Um, update one is Best of Pizza officially changed their logo. Dr. Pong site is hosted by the same admin that hosts CometPingPong.com. Dr. Pong site, they advertise on a menu. Sticky is a long, slow summertime fuck 10,000. Second update is 4chan, a whole bunch of people that were covering this were DDoS attacked. This began around the time they discovered two things. One, the images in Podesta WikiLeaks may contain hidden information through steganography. So far, we've not been able to extract the data, but it seems a promising lead. 
Many suspect if extracted, we would find the smoking gun child porn. Obviously, this is just speculation at this point. Two, the name Aaron Rao is connected through James Alfonta's Instagram. He works for the DOJ and he is responsible for prosecuting human traffickers. So you can see here this Rachel Chandler lady who is pictured with Bill Clinton and she supposedly was putting up child pornography on her Tumblr account until it got taken down. And Rachel Chandler was also in one of the emails on Wikipedia. So when I went ahead and investigated this lady through Instagram, I found some very interesting things. If you wanted a rabbit hole, this lady's Instagram is going to lead us on one. And she has some very strange photos on her Instagram, especially considering what we already know about her. Images like this one, where some sort of man is walking away with a very young child at what seems to be very late at night or very early in the morning, whatever, it's dark outside. And that's just it's a strange photo considering she's supposed to be a, you know, recruiter of children for these people. Also on her Instagram are photos like this of, you know, half naked children and stuff, which is just really strange. And these are supposedly her nephews and things. It's just really weird. And here's another reference on her thing to London. And it's also, in my opinion, another reference to the chicken farming or, you know, the chicken lovers, as we talked about. So this is chicken farming. Is she, you know, farming for chickens for these people, for the chicken lovers? You know, is that what this photo is all about? Really interesting to me. Also on this Rachel Chandler's Instagram was this photo. And, you know, Frau Julie Wagner says... You're really pushing it. And I don't know what this is, but this is probably some code or something. So I need someone to investigate and take a look at this. I thought it was interesting that this Rachel Chandler lady posted the picture of the NSA. And hey, you know what? NSA, why don't you decode that last image for me and actually do something for once instead of just spying on everyone? And this Rachel Chandler lady posted this picture and then, you know, tagged this other person, Layla World, into the thing saying, next season. And I was like, what the hell does that mean? So I decided to take a look at Layla World's, you know, Instagram and see what she was all about. And what you're looking at on the screen is actually a human being. And this is, I don't know, guy, girl, whatever, Layla World. And notice, I thought it was interesting, the you know, cross of Lorraine on right on its forehead. So that was interesting. And in this image here, and there was a lot of these, you can see Layla World or whatever making the one eye symbolism. And there was just a ton of one eye images. I just grabbed this one. And once again, this connects all back to the mask for mask thing that takes place on Halloween at Comet Ping Pong, because I guess this what this is about because you know, someone wrote mask for mask right there in the comment section. And, you know, that's just really weird. Getting back to Rachel Chandler, this is another image I found on her Instagram that's just really kind of creepy, in my opinion, and I don't even know what this is all about. And this was on Rachel Chandler's Instagram as well, and this is supposedly some Jack B individual, and I thought it was interesting that someone commented so many secrets so think of that what you will and this might be the creepiest photo i found on rachel chandler's thing and this looks like a camera system for some sort of i don't even know just look at the photos and tell me that's not extremely disturbing and someone says a lot of bedrooms i don't know what this is but this looks like something really really not good now, remember we had talked about oysters before? Now, here's where we make that connection to the drugs and other things. Now, oysters are also connected to this Walter Pierce individual that Rachel Chandler has a business with, a modeling agency. And here you can see she's buying him, quote-unquote, oysters for his birthday. So, that's just interesting. And, you know... Here's just another image on Rachel Chandler's thing of oysters. So you can see here that Rachel Chandler 
owns Midland Management and Casting with this Walter Pierce individual. And this is a really, really strange casting agency that looks like it targets transsexual young men and women, mainly men. And all the images on their website I saw were basically of everyone half naked. And what you're looking at here is Mr. Walter Pierce, who's wearing a New World Order Russian Mafia shirt. And this is his profile avatar. Just to give you an example of the type of work that Midland Agency does, here's one of the images that's popular on their website and on his Instagram page. And this is brought to you by Rachel Chandler and Walter Pierce. An interesting thing I noticed is that a lot of these people like to take shots of cash, lots of cash, and Walter Pierce is another one of them. And here I took this photo as one of the examples because here he's covering one of his eyes and giving you the one eye symbolism. And here's another picture on Walter Pierce's Instagram page of a very young looking boy. And as you can see here, he has a website and this is just really disturbing stuff. And I also noticed this connection between a lot of the people I saw and this thing called SS17. I have no idea what that is, but I just thought I'd mention it. And this was another really interesting photo I saw in here. And basically it was him showing a book about how to completely disappear and never be found again and how to change identities. And that's just a really interesting thing for someone like this to be posting. And I did notice in a lot of his photos as well that he would be making the satanic hand sign that is common in a lot of Illuminati videos. So I just thought that I'd point that out as well. And him being in George is interesting considering um, types of rings and stuff that are connected to these types of people in Georgia. And another interesting thing I saw in a lot of these people's Instagrams in this little group is they have this weird fascination with blood. And in a lot of the photos on their Instagrams, you'll find that people have blood on them. And it's just very, very strange. Like this image from Walter Pierce's website, where all these people have blood in, splattered on them and what looks like, you know, a cross symbol. And that's just really, really strange and creepy. Okay, so for another direct connection between this Walter Pierce guy and the Comet Ping Pong nightclub, check out this picture on his Instagram thing and notice the guy in the image on the bottom left and the tattoo that he has of the Star of Rim fan, which looks like the Star of David, over a party boy uh, wording. And if you look at the Comet Ping Pong Twitter page, they retweeted the Sasha Lord image of exactly that and this rapper, Mickey Blanco. And Mickey Blanco, the guy that Walter Pierce is hanging out with, just so happens to be a verified person on Twitter and is followed by Comet Ping Pong. This is one of the people Comet Ping Pong follows. This Walter Pierce dude has a whole bunch of strange tattoos like this El Chapo one that someone should probably take a look at that understands tattoo symbolism. I thought this was an interesting photo considering the chicken lovers code word stuff where he put cooking the turkey, though I'm usually cooking chickens. And I just thought that was really a strange coincidence. And then this dude had this really strange image of a seagull committing cannibalism. And that was pointed out by this Jessica Zwu character. So I decided to take a look at Jessica Zhu because this was a really strange image. And this is Jessica Zhu and you can instantly see here from her, you know, Instagram page that one of her photos is of the all seeing eye and she had a whole bunch of those where it was one eye blocked out and you can see in this also cash and pizza. And this Jessica Zhu lady is another one of these artsy types of people that post pictures like this where they're doing these really strange things and wearing these white masks. And I don't know what SS17 is, but here's another pic tagging it. And as she made the comment about the cannibalism, I was looking through her thing, looking for, you know, 
examples of that and of course I found a whole bunch of pictures where a human was the main course on the menu. And just another image from her thing at the SS-17 thing backstage and I just thought that might be an interesting image to show everyone and the type of weird crap that this lady has on her Instagram page. So getting back to Walter Pierce, remember the Podesta thing and the Marina Abramovich thing where you're supposed to cut the middle finger of your left hand and that's what you see here on this Walter Pierce image where his middle finger on his left hand is cut and you know that's exactly what you're supposed to do and that just connects him right back to all this and I thought that was an interesting image I found. Another weird thing was this guy that he had posted pictures with early in his Instagram career this you know uh, Goshan Ribchinsky guy who always poses with one eye symbolism in the photos with this kid and this Rubchinsky guy is another one of these weird individuals and here's another picture with Rupchinsky making the one eye symbolism. So I decided to take just, you know, a quick look at who this Rupchinsky guy was. And I didn't find much other than, you know, he has a website and there he has art like this, which is, you know, some strange art considering the types of people that he's connected to. It's not that strange, I guess, but, you know, this is a child pedophile and human cannibalist ring. Here's another really weird photo on this Walter Pierce's guy's thing and it's another reference to oysters and it looks like someone has physically abused this kid or something but you know this is just a really weird image to be and it's chucked 24 oysters so. So according to the first comment he posted with this image this is his kid now. I don't see how that's possible and this is the only photo of his kid on his Instagram if that is actually his kid. And at the bottom of this he says, feeling like Mira Gons with this kid, with this baby, and then Mira Gons laughed so I had to look at who Mira Gons was. So of course instantly with this hipster you get another person displaying satanic symbolism and you know the one eye symbolism so I just thought that was relevant. And when you know it, this lady is a fan of Marina Abramovich and she got an advanced reader's copy of this book. So there you go. Here's another connection to Marina Abramovich and this is just further confirmation that this lady, Mira Gons, is connected to all of this. Once again, it's another person who has a fascination with posting pictures of blood on themselves or other people. And here, boom, maybe this is the lady that gets the, you know, oxycodone for Walter Pierce, because here you can see she's posting a picture of hydrocodone. So maybe this is the source of the oysters. And she has tons of pictures with drugs and referencing drugs on her Instagram. Just for example, this photo here with pills in the background. And just for good measure, here's another one. I don't know why, but I just thought this was a creepy photo on her Instagram feed. Here's another extremely creepy image on this Mira Gons lady's Instagram. And I don't know what this is all about, but this is extraordinarily creepy. Mira Gons has images like this one on her Instagram, which are quite disturbing considering what she's connected to. And I can't even imagine what this is all about. And here you have a picture of Miragons posting a sex doll and she says it smells like childhood which is very strange considering she's connected to a pedophile ring. And here you go with this individual once again this is Walter Pierce therefore connecting Miragons and Walter Pierce and Walter Pierce is connected to all this through Rachel Chandler. Then she posts pictures like this of a cheese pizza, which, of course, according to the code, and she puts, life is suffering, so life is suffering a cheese pizza. So, do you understand the code that's being spoken here? And, obviously, I went and looked at the guy who commented on the cheese pizza photo, and it happens to be this guy. This Jordan Castro is president individual that you see on the screen right now. And I thought this was an interesting photo where he's eating pizza and someone commented, 
It looks like you would tell a 14 year old that you can relate to them and want to help them understand their bodies. And yeah, why would you be making that comment? And this guy just screams of creepiness to me and should be investigated. As you can see here, this is the other types of things that this Jordan Castro individual is interested in. You know, you can see drugs, shit dogs, whatever that is, uh, you know, Adderall, kill cops, you know, great individual. And I'd also like to point out he had an image like this on his Instagram. And not only is it creepy that this guy has a picture of a baby on his Insta, but that baby should not be drinking that crap that it's holding. That's absolutely disgusting. Now, I don't know what this is all about, but this is another creepy image on Miragons' Instagram that I thought I would share with everybody. And then this lady is connected to a, you know, child pedophile and human trafficking ring that has a funny conversation to post on her Instagram, wouldn't you say? Babies are for stealing. Ha ha ha. People gotta stop being so uptight about their babies. Just let me have it. It's fine. Like, literally fine. Everyone needs to calm about down about it. What are these people talking about? Another thing on this lady's public Instagram is here where she's talking to some guy named Alex. Where he's talking about, you know, masturbating. And then she replies, you know, I saw Fifty Shades of Grey and cut myself while listening to the new Drake album. And now, the creepiest part about this Mira Gons lady that I have to get to and needs to be investigated is the fact that she's connected to a whole bunch of small children. Here's one image that needs to be thoroughly investigated. She posted this and then she put some sort of scrambled message next to this image. I was unable to decipher what that message might be. However, I'm sure someone can, and please, please leave comments, and someone try to figure out what this is about. And then there's another image of a, another young girl at a pool, and just, just screams of something wrong here. And then you have another young girl, and she puts next to it, important business emails. Uh, is that a joke, or, you know, what's really going on here? Why are they posting stuff like this? Another really disturbing image was this one where this girl is pointing at a screen showing girl dies and drowning and the girl looks just like her and that's just really, really creepy. In the grand finale on this lady's Instagram for me was this image here with pizza in the foreground and a small girl in the background and the comment is Turn the fuck up this Saturday night. Uh, for what exactly? Just to show you how deep this rabbit hole goes when you start investigating all this stuff from Rachel Chandler to Walter Pierce. This is another friend of Walter Pierce, and I thought this was a very strange photo on their account as well. So there's so many people to investigate that we really do need like a whole department of people investigating this with actual authority so they can go out and arrest people when they actually find out the truth about some of these innuendos people are making on Instagram. I mean just going over all the people I covered in my first video like this Victoria Lynn Race who's another one of these Illuminati all-seeing eye showing people and all their connections such as her connection to her lover Brian Baker but also her connection directly to James Alephantis as you can see. From this photo posted to Victoria Lynn Race's Instagram account, this is Jimmy Comet, James Alephantis at her house cooking dinner. So she's directly connected to this individual. And these people post all their connections. And you can see here she got this book, um, Alice in Wonderland, which is a famous book, but it also has very occult significance from her lover, Brian Baker's. And I went through Brian Baker's Instagram and all I could find that he is another Satanist and works with a band called Bad Religion. And this Brian Baker's guy should be absolutely investigated and his band Bad Religion should be boycotted until this is all cleared up. And here's another interesting photo on Victoria Lynn Race's Instagram of what's called the Lobster Lady and it looks like a dead corpse and just really strange photo and this was for Transformer DC 
which is one of these groups they're all connected to. And another thing is she follows this group Wild Taurus, and this Wild Taurus artist posts some really creepy images on their Instagram account, and we'll just go through them, like this one you're looking at here, which looks like some sort of satanic ritual. Another weird ritualistic looking photo that was on Wild Taurus's Instagram is this one, and you can see what looks like the chakras are painted on that guy's back, which looks like a corpse, or I don't even know, just weird photo. Probably the creepiest photo on Wild Taurus's Instagram was this one of, you know, a human jawbone, and someone commented on the previous video that this looks modern, and I would agree, and these people should be investigated. And Victoria Lynn Race also follows this individual, Witch Trials, who has human sacrifice written on her profile, and someone should investigate this account as well. And another person connected to all this is this Insta Patgram guy, and he displays the one eye symbolism. He follows Jimmy Comet's pizza, so he's directly connected to James Elephantis. And you can see here he puts up lots of images like this one, which show lots of satanic symbolism. And in what seems to be a recurring theme, this individual happens to be a teacher at Salford Lads Club. So whoever is, you know, in charge of Salford Lads Club should investigate this Insta Patgram individual. Here's just another post by Insta Patgram that you can read for yourself. Just pause the video and you can see that this guy clearly is into Satanism. And this Insta Patgram guy also posted this movie called Wisconsin Death Trip, which also has a book, and in the movie I guess it's just full of images of dead children and dead bodies, and it's just a really gross movie, and this is a cult classic for really sick people. Another person highly connected to all this because of who they follow, including the Jimmy Comet Instagram account and a lot of the other Instagram accounts and people who follow them and all that, so this night gallery, another person whose avatar is the one eye symbolism. And here you can see what I think is a, you know, clear showing that this is connected to the walnut code I talked about earlier, which is the young female uh, genitalia. You can see it's right under the image of a girl, a young girl on the wall. And as you can see here, this night gallery seems to have a weird fascination with walnuts, which we know is code. So I just thought that was interesting because it was all over their Instagram. This is another really interesting post, and this one is titled Yum Yum Donuts. And this looks like really weird crap going on, possibly even, you know, some sort of cannibalism or I don't even know. But to title this Yum Yum Donuts is just really strange. And here's the individual that runs the Night Gallery account. And she's another one of these crazy liberal leftists, you know, just the future is female feminist, you know, down with men nonsense who probably was voting for Hillary just because Hillary was a female and she's connected to all these, you know, pedophile rings and all this gross crap. And on her account is another connection to London. And you can see here one of the members of the royal family holding flowers in front of a small girl. So... And it says on it, you know, simmies. And, you know, she comments, don't look a gift horse in the mouth. And I just thought that was an interesting photo that I would add to this documentary because this lady's connected to this pedophile ring. And extremely interestingly, this reminds me of the pizza guy shop's photo of that empty, you know, kill room they're all talking about. But this one, it looks like they have a, you know, child chained up. And this is supposed to be art. And you can see, you know, always terrifying and sad in the comment sections. And this right here to me is extremely creepy. And if you call this art, then there's something wrong with you. Okay, this looks exactly like, you know, a kid chained up in some sort of like, you know, I don't even want to just look at this. Like this is art, a kid chained up in like some sort of weird, empty, like torture looking room. Like, what the hell is wrong with you people? Here's another extremely strange one, because the lady puts beauties and then three roses, and it's an image of a small girl. And roses in the prostitution rings mean... Roses mean dollars, used mostly as a euphemism in prostitution circles, sometimes also referred to as flowers. 
an example, her ad said that a donation of 100 roses would be required for, and I don't know what that is, but you know, you get the gist. So you know, that brings us back to this image. So when she puts roses next to this little girl, is that some sort of code for people to know that, you know, this girl's for sale or some creepy thing like that? This needs to be investigated. And the last photo we'll cover on Night Gallery's Instagram is this one, where it looks like two small children are doing something they shouldn't be doing. And this is art to this lady as well. So this entire thing is just totally creepy, and Night Gallery needs to be investigated by somebody. And just real quick, another one of these people I saw commenting on one of the Jimmy Comet Instagram images was this person, everybody's daughter, who I checked and follows Jimmy Comet. And on their Instagram, I only found one image worth sharing and just noticed the profile with the single eye shot again. But this image here just looked really creepy and I thought I'd add it to this documentary so people could research this account closer. Just to go back over some of the Instagram people I found from the first video and please go back and watch that first video again. But this Julian Traeger guy seems to be highly connected to Jimmy Comet because he was the number one suggested feed. And just notice his one eye symbolism and his avatar. So another one of the people I investigated and found out who they were was C. Boutlier, also Boutlier, who was commenting all over some of the creepiest photos on Jimmy Comet's Instagram page and had a private Instagram account. Well, it turns out the rest of this guy's social media accounts aren't private. So he's Christopher Boutelier of, you know, the Washington DC area and he's into design. The C. Boutelier guy also has a MySpace account, which is just a joke. I never had a MySpace account, but whatever. And on there, the, on his MySpace account, he has one photo and it looks like he's in some sort of weird S&M stuff. And he's making, of course, the one eye symbolism again. So this guy is someone I would absolutely 100% investigate. And here again is the C. Boutelier guy at some Nigel Barker book party. And he's obviously, you know, another one of these people on the scene in DC. And here he is in Washington Magazine. And I would like to highly point out that this guy needs to be investigated because he's one of the people posting some of the creepiest comments on Jimmy Comet's Instagram page. Another person I saw commenting on Jimmy Comet's Instagram and, you know, had his a private account now was this, his name is Andy Guy. And on here it says, you're only one shirtless pic away from being Instagram famous. Well, guess what? Word to the wise, his name is Andy. When you're commenting creepy crap on Jimmy Comet's Instagram page, you're only one comment away from being YouTube famous for being connected to a pedophilia ring. And wouldn't you know it, this Andrew James Castillo, his name is Andy, actually has a Facebook account. And on his Facebook account, his photos just don't happen to be private. That's too bad. Now they're in my YouTube video. And I hope people investigate this person because his comments on Jimmy Comet's Instagram make him highly implicated. This Andrew James Castillo who lives near Comet Ping Pong and seems to frequent it quite often went and posted this picture of his friend Ryan O'Laughlin basically making love to chicken and we already know that chicken lovers is code for pedophilia so I thought that was an interesting photo to have on his account. Then there's this creepy photo where these two are driving around saving the children supposedly with these masks on and that's just a very interesting photo to be on this guy's account especially considering this photo and one of the comments by a phil evans quote unquote did you steal it and makes you kind of wonder what andrew james castillo is doing at night driving around saving the children supposedly in a mask and just to prove to all of you that I actually went ahead and did the research on all this, this lady, this Charlotte D. Carchachi lady, does actually follow Jimmy Comet. So do these other people I say do. Like if you go and you do the research yourself, you can just go ahead and look and you can see right there in the middle of the screen, she follows Jimmy Comet. 
So if I say someone does, I actually went and looked, and they do. And as I noted, it's another one of these artsy type DC locals that's involved in the media and the art scene, and she's got the one eye symbolism up as her avatar. So, you know, there's a clear connection here between all these people. Just rolling along on the theme of people I found that left interesting comments to investigate. This Wyatt F. Boyd guy left one talking about, you know, all these different things in here. It's just a really weird comment to me. And he brings up pizza and the giant comet oven. And I guess oven's another code word. And it's just really interesting. And he talks about he's been living nearby it for five years and he goes there all the time. So I would ask this guy some questions if I was an investigator. Obviously, there's a ton of comments on the Google Plus page for Comet Ping Pong and all the other businesses and their Yelp pages. And everyone should go there and leave comments warning other people not to go there, but also to investigate the people that left really good reviews saying they, you know, absolutely loved the food or absolutely hated it or made references to any of these code words. And people like this Clint Law guy at the top here should be investigated. So as Comet Ping Pong has a Twitter account, I thought it would be worth investigating purposes to go ahead and take a screenshot of every person that Comet Ping Pong follows on Twitter. So I went ahead and did that. I'm going to show all those to you now, and I'm not going to read out every one of them. And I feel this is important evidence because this is who Comet Ping Pong actually follows. Okay, this isn't who follows them and since this whole story broke a whole bunch of people investigating them joined their followers list so documenting all their followers and trying to weed out the investigators from people that were following before is going to be almost impossible but we can go ahead and look at all the people they follow and i highly doubt they've been adding people who have been investigating them to this list and this means any of these people could actually if they followed them back could actually, you know, directly message them and private message Comet Ping Pong. So all of these people should be likely investigated, especially if they show similar symbology on their accounts. And honestly, as these play across the screen, I'm just going to play them after I finish speaking. If you see any that you think deserve further investigation, please go ahead and investigate any of these accounts. And I went ahead and investigated some of these accounts and I also questioned some other ones, um, but basically, you know, go ahead and just take note of all these people that Comet Ping Pong followed because any one of them could be involved in this whole thing.
I did find it interesting that Comet Ping Pong followed so many journalists, especially journalists in the D.C. area, like this Samantha Greider lady, or Greeter, and I decided to go ahead and ask her why Comet Ping Pong might be following her on Twitter, and I got no response. So, not even like, a, oh, I don't know, but nothing. Just no response at all. And I know she saw my tweet, because she basically has the same amount of followers as I do. Here's another interesting tweet from the Comet Ping Pong Twitter account, and this is for their Mask for Mask Halloween event, and that looks like vampiric activity, or, you know, at least that's what this ad would lead you to believe, and that's just really, really strange and really, really gross. Another image that was on their Comet Ping Pong Twitter is this one, where they're wishing a Alex McCracken a big happy birthday, and, you know, this is obviously a picture of the staff or the people who work at Comet Ping Pong. And there you go. Here's an image of all the people working there that have to be investigated. And, you know, with all the facial recognition technology, I'm sure a law enforcement agency could track every one of these people down. So there you go. Go investigate all these people, please. Obviously, you can also look at what Comet Ping Pong tweets out. And one of the things they retweet and tweet about all the time is the Sasha Lords Presents. And the Sasha Lord lady is obviously very strange. And you can see here for some of the art, it displays the Illuminati eye throughout the image. And it says, you know, pleasure curses and stronger sex. So obviously this is, you know, very creepy. And it's also been compared to Jeffrey Dahmer type of art. And here you have the Sasha Lord Presents Twitter account, and that's still online and public and still available for investigators to dig through and find anything they can. One of the events they tweeted about a lot that they hold is this very strange mask for mask event at Comet Ping Pong on Halloween. And another person that's very highly implicated in all this is this summer camp individual, you know, Miss Summer Camp, this transsexual or cross-dresser whatever that attends or performs there all the time and you can see here this is the summer camp twitter page and it's just very strange and if you go through it you'll see all types of strange crap also it must be noted that for sasha lord's birthday this amanda kleinman known as majestic eight performed at comet ping pong and made references to pedophilia as a joke in the performance and when you go online and find one of her music videos you can clearly see in the video that she makes another joke this majestic a person to pedophilia in that music video and i would have uploaded those videos as part of this documentary just the clips of her saying that stuff but there's been dcma you know violations handed out for it so i can't do that so that we don't risk losing all this other information due to a copyright strike and this is just another example where YouTube censorship has gone completely out of control and now DMCA notices are being used to help child pedophiles hide their actions in their videos. I also found it interesting that one of the people following, you know, Comet Ping Pong and Comet Ping Pong followed them back was, you know, following the FBI investigation into the emails. <laughs> Other account that I saw that Comet Ping Pong tweets and retweets a lot from is this Avaluna group. And you can see right here, at Avaluna group is in there with, you know, Comet Ping Pong and Sasha Lord Presents. So you can go and look at the Avaluna group's Twitter page. And this right here is the Avaluna Twitter page. And I don't know what this whole thing's about. It looks like a sleepover party for adults or some sort of weird thing, but... I have no idea what this is all about, but they definitely deserve investigation. Another one I saw a lot on there was this adult mom band, and I decided to take a look at their account as well. And this adult mom band is another strange looking lady who seems to be into all types of weird crap, and you know, she's connected to all this, and she performs a lot at Comet Ping Pong with Sasha Lord and all these people, so she's highly connected to all this. And it just so happens that when you go through her tweets that this adult mom person turns out to be a teacher dealing with four-year-olds, and I would highly suggest that you get her away from anyone that young.
And here's just another tweet that Comet Ping Pong retweeted by this Anthony Rodriguez guy. And, you know, there's just so many rabbit holes to investigate off of their Twitter account that serious team of researchers could spend like a month looking at this stuff. Just another really interesting tweet by Comet Ping Pong to this Tyler Green DC individual. And I couldn't figure out what this was about, but, you know, considering what Comet Ping Pong's involved with, this could have very bad implications. Another really strange account I found that follows Comet Ping Pong and Comet Ping Pong follows him back is this one. And this guy says, does anyone have a human skeleton I can borrow? I'm serious. Message me. Hashtag art school. So I would investigate this individual as well. And another person that Comet Ping Pong follows and follows Comet Ping Pong back is this girl and she happens to be a mom which is very creepy and right on her profile it has you over yes and pizza that's what the rest of that word actually says another interesting trend i found on comet ping pong was they posted every time they had a private party so someone should probably cross reference this versus people's travel schedules to see who might have been there for these private parties to see if it was any of these people like Podesta or Hillary or Obama because they posted all these dates and when they're actually going to be closed for these private parties they had. And just to confirm that you can actually rent the whole place out, I found this on the Comet Ping Pong website and the end of it reads, you can even rent out the whole restaurant. We are open to all ideas, of course. Be sure to give us some ID some details to get started, like preferred date time and type of party kids adults or a mix of both email us really creepy isn't it kids adults or a mix of both for your party that's just really strange way to put it considering what they're involved in another person that needs to be highly investigated is this kim noble lady who made images like this and is tied to satanic ritual abuse in her childhood and clearly shows what looks to me like an adult having sex with a smaller individual on top of a handkerchief and we've already covered the handkerchief code and her other murals throughout the restaurant are absolutely disturbing another extremely important connection found here is this aaron rao guy who works as a human and trafficking prosecutor for the department of justice and this guy has uncovered child pedophilia and pornography in the past and this guy is highly connected to all this because he's friends with jimmy comet and you know he's connected through instagram and a whole bunch of other things and it's just very very strange that this guy would be connected to this since he's supposed to be investigating this as you can see here this is exactly what aaron Rao does and we found this all in his linkedin profile and someone posted it on 4chan and this guy needs to be highly investigated and likely kicked out of the department of justice this is why nothing's been done because people like this are connected to this I'd also like to thank Comet Ping Pong because on their stupid website they listed all their friends with links to their organizations. So you can see here all the organizations that should be investigated as part of this because they're linked. And right on there is Media Matters because of David Brock. And that's why I haven't heard anything about this in the media because all the media takes their marching orders from Media Matters and Media Matters won't cover a crime they're involved in. Just another quick note, an interesting email I found in my search for all this information was uh, from Truth Out to, you know, the Podestas and talking about how, you know, they can make out their check to them to make sure they get the truth out. <laughs> Interestingly, one of the biggest reviews for this place came from Guy Fieri, and that's just really strange, and he had a clam pizza, and you can obviously see the connotation there in this article on Guy Fieri's take on Comet Ping Pong. Guy Fieri says, okay, so I'll tell you a story about Comet Ping Pong. So I'm standing there with this guy and we're cooking and he's got a pizza oven that he bought the parts in Italy and he constructed the pizza oven himself. He sits there and he says, okay, I'm going to make you a clam pizza and my mouth is watering right now as I'm telling you this. It was one of the greatest pizzas. It's up in the top pizzas I've ever had. We've got, we got done and I walked outside of Comet Ping Pong. I called up my buddy that does all my restaurant supplies and I said, Hey, you find me a wood-fired oven and not one of those gas-assisted ones. I want a real deal out of Italy wood-fired oven. 
I think it was probably three months later I installed my first wood-fired oven in my house and now I have three wood-fired ovens. You have three wood-fired ovens at your house? Well, I have one at my house, one at my ranch, and one on the trailer that I use for charity events. And in this statement you can find all types of references to the code words we've been talking about. Oven is supposed to be that there's something being omissed. I guess that's a clue to, you know, information being omissed from this. And, you know, the pizza thing, you know, the greatest pizza ever. This Guy Fieri guy is, needs to be investigated as part of this. Another really interesting review that I thought could use some further investigation into this Jeff Barsky guy, you know, best pizza in the city. I'm here once a week. Okay, so, and the staff is the coolest. And he also mentions the bookstore a few doors down. You know, okay, this guy probably needs to be investigated. Another lady that I looked into that Comet Ping Pong retweeted, Katie Skinnerer. I'm sad that I live so far away from Comet Ping Pong. Hashtag, I love pizza. Of course, this Katie Skinnerer, who loves Comet Ping Pong pizza, also has found a new pizza place called Hideaway Life in Washington State. And she goes, pizza, love, hashtag hideaway life. And of course, what does Katie do for work? She's a teacher, of course. What do teachers do on fall break? Eat it, hideaway pizza, of course. Love, pizza. And that's just disturbing and continues on with the connection of teachers and this pizza ring. And because the truther movement is absolutely awesome at some things, they've been truth bombing all these people that reviewed Comet Ping Pong as you can see here, and I'd love for people to keep doing that and use this documentary to do that as well. You know, share this information as much as you can and warn as many people on these companies' business reviews and things like that because the power of the people is the way to take these people down. If we create a large enough firestorm, it'll force the authorities into investigating all this and it'll force these people to admit that they were connected to what is a very shady pedophile ring, possibly pedo string, and likely cannibalism and other types of human sacrifice and things like that going on here. Someone needs to do a full investigation of this place. You know, a place that has, according to some of the reviews, you know, hidden behind secret panels and just things like that. Like this place just screams of something else going on here. And someone really does need to investigate. We need to force the authorities to go in and open the secret panels. It's going to be up to us to do this because the establishment is, you know, covering all these crimes up and trying to hide this and using all of their positions within law enforcement and other things that are compromised in order to do this. And this is normally done so that the powers that be can have blackmail over these politicians and these highly influential people that attend these pedophile rings and pedosadist rings and cannibalism rings. And they do it so they can blackmail them. And these people aren't allowed into positions of power without doing this type of stuff so that the powers that be, the international banksters, have complete control over our political system. And like always, those most vulnerable in the system are those who suffer, children who need our protection. So the only way we can get any justice for them is to continue investigating this ourselves, posting all the evidence we can find. Other researchers need to join and keep you know investigating this and you know back up all the information that i showed in this video and you know try to prove it wrong or try to prove it right and do your own research you know don't believe anything i said we need other people to investigate this we need people with law enforcement authority to investigate this we need other researchers to investigate this and cheers to everyone who's helped already and those who know about this type of stuff right now are a minority of the public but it doesn't take a majority to prevail. It takes an irate, tireless minority keen to set brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. And we need to keep doing that. We need to keep spreading the message. We need to keep telling people about this information. Everyone who shares this video wakes another person up. Everyone who sees this video that doesn't know about this wakes another person up. For if we woke everyone up to this information, the average person would be on our side. And I quote, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And there are far more good people on this earth that would not put up with this type of sick behavior by the elites and by members of our society. 
and if the average person knew what was going on, they would be standing there right beside us demanding an investigation into these things. And that's what we need. So the most important thing to do now is to continue the research and to share this information so that the average person wakes up and understands what's going on. Then we can all band together and take down these elite once and for all. So do not fear, because there's a lot more of us than there are of them.